Well, I apologize for the noise. Um, I'd lie and say it's necessary, but the reality is I'm bad at voiceovers, so uh, easier just to do this in person as is. So in front of the camera here is a Dell Precision Rack 7910 and a Dell PowerEdge R730. Essentially, as far as I can tell, basically the exact same server. With the one caveat that the R730 has more drive bay configurations than the Rack 7910. As far as I can tell, this is the only chassis you can get for the Rack 7910, which is the 8 SFF bay chassis. And as the title of the video should make clear, hopefully, uh, what I want to talk about is PCI Express bifurcation. And this is especially for the purpose of running NVMe drives in your systems. And there's a couple different caveats and issues you might run into when dealing with this. And the biggest one is going to be BIOS versions. So the Rack 7910 at first, I thought it did not have PCI Express bifurcation support. Unfortunately, I've already updated the BIOS, so I can't show the, uh, whoops, <laughs> um, I can't show what it was showing originally, but this now has the latest BIOS on it, which is uh, 2.17.0, which actually is a really recent release, so, yeah. Um, anywho, before, on the Rack 7910, when you go to Integrated Devices, and then you go all the way to the bottom. This option was not there for the slot bifurcation. It did have slot disablement, but um, yeah, originally I was gonna make a video basically letting people know that the Rack 7910 didn't have PCI Express bifurcation support if you wanted to put uh, NVMe drive card in there. But luckily, I did my due diligence and I decided, well, maybe I should update the BIOS real quick since between this and the R730 over there, they were both on completely different BIOS versions. So if you're running what's basically 13th, yeah, 13th Gen Dell servers and you don't have the option for slot bifurcation, you may want to make sure that your BIOS and everything is up to date, which you probably should do anyways. Um, I was actually surprised because this is one of the few situations where a BIOS update actually did something beneficial, or at least obviously, it, that was obviously beneficial because yeah, doing the BIOS update was totally worth it to get slot bifurcation. Might have added more uh, microcode for CPU support too, I don't know, but um, yeah, that was the biggest thing. So, done with this. I'm going to shut this down. Um, obviously, next to it is the R730. As you can see in the device manager, it's showing four of the crucial one terabyte P3 solid state drives. Um, one's not formatted right now, but that's kind of whatever. And there is no drives in the uh, front drive base and I guess if you want to verify you can just look up that model number and see that that is a PCI Express drive. Now depending on your riser configuration that will determine what you can do for the PCI Express drives adapters. So in this case Fans are getting a little angry. Um, in this case, I'm using a PCI Express X16 uh, adapter card that splits up the lanes and allows me to put four NVMe drives in this system. You might not need PCI Express bifurcation if you're willing to spend more money to get a card with a controller chip that would allow you to use it in anything, but cards like that one are a lot cheaper 
which I think that was like $40 versus a higher end card that would have been, I think in like the $200 range that would have worked in my older Dells. So I'm gonna put this cover back on. Now, when running a card like that in your system, you may have to double check your settings and BIOS to make sure they're configured correctly. When I initially put the card in this server, um, the BIOS is at stock settings. I, I selected the option to put it at default. And um, what I had to do was specify the PCI Express bifurcation settings. Probably should have left the other server on. Um, might reboot fast enough. I'm just gonna pause. All right, spared you from a couple minutes of awkward silence, <laughs> or at least awkward server noises. So now we're in the uh, system BIOS for the slot bifurcation settings, and. If your BIOS is at defaults, these will all be set at default bifurcation. And without reading the manual, my guess is that default bifurcation is either putting it with no bifurcation or it'll split the uh, slot in half. Um, I'm guessing it's more of no bifurcation though because when the settings were like this with that card that's in there, I was only seeing one of my NVMe drives. So when you install one of those cards, if if it just straight up splits up the drives into the four PCI Express uh, clusters of four PCI Express lanes, you will have to go in your BIOS settings and then change accordingly. So in my case, since there's four of those drives, it's going to be the four by four by four by four bifurcation. If you're using one of these cards in an 8x slot, so that'll uh, allow you to put two NVMe drives in the slot then you'll have to select and to split it up four by four in one of the eight x slots basically if if your drives don't show up after setting the appropriate bifurcation you may double check to see if your card requires any special configuration um, you also might want to double check to make sure you have it in the right slot or that you have it in um, the slot that your CPUs exist in. So if you only have one CPU, you can't use all your slots in the R730. And that's probably the case also with some of the other um, Dell models of that generation. But yeah, that's definitely something you want to keep an eye on. So I'm going to power this off now because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to move on to the Rack 7910 because that one's easier to work with. Because there's no monitor on top of it right now. <laughs> so this Rack 7910 currently is in a single CPU configuration. And because of that, not all of your slots are accessible even if the cards are plugged in. There we go. So you'll notice on this, uh, look at this, yeah, Riser 2. It's a Riser 2 card, if I can get the glare to work with me. You'll notice the top slot is labeled CPU 2. So if you plug anything into this and you don't have CPU 2 installed, it's just going to do nothing because there's no there's no lanes going to it from CPU 1. So if you're not running dual CPUs in your server, it does limit you to which slots you can actually use. Oops. There we go. And the other thing you want to be mindful of is Riser 3. Depending on which Riser 3 you have, so this particular server has the dual slot version and it's two X8 slots. So that little quad NVMe adapter card I have, you'd only be able to use two drives in this, either one of these slots. Dell does make 
in uh, X16 riser, but then it only has one of the PCI Express slots. So that's something you'll have to keep in mind. I believe, but I can't say with absolute certainty, that if you have an R730 XD, the riser 3 card should be an X16 only one because with the R730 XD models, they have two two and a half inch drive bays on top of the power supplies, which obscures your bottom slot. And the pictures I've seen, at least of the people that are selling the R730 XDs, don't have the riser card with uh, two slots. It's just a single slot. And from the little research I did, to the best of my knowledge, Dell did not make a single slot expansion slot um, riser that was anything other than X16. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, with riser 1, you are limited to X8 slots. And I, what I didn't mention, though, is that these require you to have CPU2 installed. So if you do plan on expanding beyond the slots that are usable with one CPU, uh, it'd be ideal to get a second CPU installed. And I forget what these slot numbers are. So if you're running a single slot or a single CPU configuration, you will be able to use slot five on riser two and slot six and seven on riser three. And honestly, with the prices of, uh, these are uh, V3, V4 Xeons, it's really not that bad to upgrade. Unless you're running something exotic. Like if you're running some really crazy 3.6 gigahertz 10 core Xeon, it might cost you a little. <laughs> but um, if you're running like a low end 20 core 2.2 gigahertz Xeon, so I think these came in a 20 core variety. Either way, if you're running like a high core count, slow, slower clock speed Xeon, they're so cheap that you might as well just add your second CPU because it'll just give you so much more expandability in the long run if you want to do stuff. And in my case, once I do some testing to verify that the configuration I want to do is going to work, my plans are probably to upgrade one of my R7. Well, I'm going to upgrade my main R720. And I'm going to put a Tesla M40 in uh, slot 4. And then what's going to be slot 6 will be where the NVMe adapter card I have goes. But that'll be a different video. Hopefully, uh, you know, fingers crossed, testing works just as I expect it to. And, uh, yeah. But hopefully um, that was to the point and uh, was helpful if you plan on trying to do any PCI Express bifurcation in a 13th Gen Dell server. I would assume that this information should also apply to the PowerEdge T630, R630, maybe uh, T430. I don't know what the slot configuration that's going to be like, but this should also carry over to a lot of the other 13th Gen stuff. So, um, yeah, just to summarize, make sure that you have your BIOS up to date, um, CPUs installed for the slots you want to use, and um, the correct risers, <laughs> um, depending on your configuration, of course. But hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.